you have to t- handle your patient the way you find them. Mm. Now maybe this should have been shared during history taking, but mm. it wasn't. Mm. But now that is who that is um that is how they've presented and that is who they are and maybe you sh- didn't ask for the history or you ought to have known mm. now you see sometimes those are some of the intricacies where you're calling mm. in someone else yet they didn't mm. know that and you require them to give expert okay. witness the mm. case of alex madaga mm. 18 hours mm. the guy who was in an ambulance yeah. for 18 mm. hours yes, and they lost yes, their yes, lives yes, yes. Mm. There, mm. we are not suing a doctor, we are not suing a hospital. Maybe we are suing NH, mm. but we were also, it's on, it was an issue of emergency mm. healthcare, mm. and it was also taken up as a public interest case. Public interest because this this man probably died, and it would have been any other Kenyan in his mm. position. An estimated 1.1 million Kenyans fall into poverty each year, and that's because of healthcare costs. Would Shah Sheikh? UHC change that or is there more? Or perhaps what's the difference between a pharmacy with a blue cross and a green cross? What about cancer and the rising incidence amongst the youth? Is it just lifestyle changes or is there more? Women's health, men's health, your children's health, the economy, this and more awaits you on season two of Kenya's favorite health podcast. My name is Dr. Diana Wangarigitao, and welcome to season two of the One Health Lens podcast. Hello, welcome to the One Health Lens Podcast, where we have conversations around health and related topics, making them simple and easy for you to understand. I'm your host, Dr. Diana Wangari-Gitao. And I am Dr. Simon Moshara Kigodu. Today's topic, so you want to sue your hospital. Something has gone wrong and you want to take some legal action. What do you do? Where do you start? I'll let the guest introduce herself and we'll get going. Hello everyone, my name is Margaret Nyabura, a health lawyer. As usual, I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. At this rate, you are podcast, uh, <laughs> podcast lawyer. Kabisa. Okay, let's start with medical negligence, right? How is it defined legally? Hmm. Is there a definition? Hmm. Okay, so negligence from the top falls within the realm of offenses we would call civil offenses. That's 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 wrong actually. Civil offense because civil a civil wrong. Mm-hmm. Wrong is the better word mm-hmm. because a criminal a criminal a criminal wrong is what we call an offense mm-hmm. because okay. it's it's been termed to be so by a a law, a legislation, a statute that has mm-hmm. a penal code the penal code sorry mm-hmm. that has created it as an offense. So negligence is a tort. A tort is a civil wrong. So it's in a, it's one of a list of many which we call civil wrongs um dr gingondu have you ever hit someone traffic offense no on the road yes has no. someone hit you that's my biggest fear mm-hmm. uh, or hit the car mm-hmm. yeah hit the car sorry. Yeah. every day in nairobi okay <laughs> oh accidents are okay yes. but hitting someone is yes, all you don't <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's a road accident actually what i meant yeah, okay. okay that's also a civil wrong okay. so this falls within the realm of what you would call an offense between you and another person the state is not involved except mm. where we are bringing them in to keep peace and law and order and to mm. adjudicate over mm the damages or rather what mm. compensation i'm supposed to make mm. to you because of the civil wrong mm. so i'm trying to create a distinction between what is a civil wrong and a criminal wrong which is what an offense is and a criminal wrong would here the state enters the chat the state has enters the chat because because we are citizens of kenya mm. we have got like a protection an umbrella yes that in exchange for i'm not so sure whether this applies anymore mm-hmm. for patriotism or for pleading allegiance then you have got the protection assigned to you as a as a citizen of kenya and that's why there's the whole fuss over who has the id and who doesn't have the id coming to think of it the national id card really accords somebody a lot of benefits or a lot of um you can enter so many doors or you can knock on so many doors with that identification that the person who does not have the same identification cannot mm. be afforded that kind of audience so now 
in exchange for pleading allegiance or being a citizen of the state, there is some protection that is offered to you. That's why we have got the National Police Service to keep law and order. Mm -hmm. And what happens then, because there are some offenses which are not directly an offense to mm -hmm. Dr. Kigondo, not a civil wrong, you mm -hmm. did not hit his car, but you struck him, or rather you got some money from him under false pretenses, mm -hmm. or maybe you threatened to rob him at gunpoint, right? So those are different offenses which are created under an instrument we usually call the penal code. Other than the penal code, we have got small offenses in so many other regulations, even within the very well-regulated medical industry. The different acts, which are also called acts of parliament, they're called mm. statutes or legislation, such as the Health Act, mm. the, the KMPD, it's called the KMPD C mm. mm. Act. All of them create offenses. Mm. Now, some offenses, you might wonder now who does this offend or is it just a way for the country to make some money? Mm. For instance, if Dr. Kigondo does not renew his license mm. and is practicing without renewing his license, mm. there's a crime of a certain nature, mm. right? Mm. Is it a crime though? Offense, or it's an offense? offense. Mm. Or it's uh, some of them are within ethical boundaries. Mm. Some of them go beyond ethical boundaries and gra they graduate to what we call offenses. Mm. Now it depends on what did this doctor do. Mm. So it could fall within the large spectrum mm. before even we just say that what a doctor did to you is a thought because it's a civil wrong. Mm. For instance, if we are to look at the HIV AIDS Prevention and Control Act, mm. if I walk into a clinic and I'm coming to see Dr. Kigondu and he for some reason needs to uh, get uh, draw some blood for a HIV test, he needs to get my consent and it should be written. Mm. If he does so without seeking my consent, there's an offense created under that under the HIV AIDS Prevention mm. and Control Act that creates an offense of testing without the consent of a person. Mm. Now, what you usually find with offenses created under such acts is there's usually an option given for a fine mm. or a sentence. Now, I would have to introduce the police at this point because I need to go and make a report at the nearest police station. The easiest thing mm. usually, so that you can have them a most seamless if such a thing is possible, mm -hmm. with a national police service or at a claims desk in any police station in this country, mm -hmm. is go to the police station nearest to where the offense took place. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, if I live in Langata mm -hmm. and I go to Kiambu, I go to... What's this on Kiambu Road? Uh, DCI. Yeah, DCI. Yeah, if I go to DCI, they might refer me back to current police station mm. and asked me to go report there and get an OB number. Mm. Now, it's not just enough for you to get the occurrence book number. What we call OB in full mm. is occurrence book number. It's simply mm. a large counter book and your name is entered and the particulars of the offense and which um, where it took place and whatnot. Now, between that to the place where you usually find somebody has been arraigned or they've been presented in court for them to answer for this crime, there needs to be an investigation. A police file needs to be opened. It cannot be opened until investigation has taken place. That's why there are so many people walking around with two small papers in their bags with an OB number, yet they have never gotten to the bottom of whatever offense they went to report at the police station. Mm. Many of us, we usually just get the OB so that we can get um, an affidavit so that we can go and renew our logbooks, renew title deeds, initiate the process of getting another national ID card. Mm. But for purposes of offenses, you may need the police officer to conduct investigations, arrest the suspected, uh, the suspect, mm -hmm. arrest the suspect. Then now here enters the office of the director of public prosecutions, mm -hmm. right? So then and we're still ones. talking about medical. So if um, uh, I still go to the police first of all. Yes, okay. as long Karen. as it's an offense, mm -hmm. as long as it's a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are trying to finish with criminal offenses, and then we go to okay. towards the the civil wrongs. Mm -hmm. Now, the director of public prosecutions is the one who usually, the office of the director of public prosecutions, because now the director sits at the top and then he's got a bunch of officers who work from him, for him or her. Um, they are the ones who make the decision to uh, prosecute or not, right? So there's usually elements of the crime. Mm. There's usually just um, having the suspect. You cannot have a blank charge sheet. This is where the charge sheet is drawn. Mm. It's usually in conjunction between... Um, National Police Service and the uh, Director of Public Prosecutions. Now, let's say it's Dr. Kigondo. Uh, he took a HIV test without my consent. 
the charge sheet has got to expressly bear the 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 the, mm. the crime mm. you cannot sue somebody under criminal law for an offense that does not exist it has to exist and it has to have existed at the time of commission now the other thing you need to know is with criminal offenses there is no there is no time limit when you cannot um seek to get redress for them what do i mean by that we have got something we call the statute of limitations for instance when we start looking at civil wrongs i will tell you that there is a three-year limit for some there's a one-year limit for others now with criminal uh liability it's usually left open the problem with that however is the longer you take before you report such a crime it's going to be increasingly difficult for you to prove it and therefore your case keeps weakening by the day right so different acts different laws uh, create offenses and that falls within what we call criminal liability now just as with any other criminal uh, liability uh, criminal case the doctor is going to be arraigned in court at first they are a suspect at this point then they're going to have the charges read out for them so how do i participate myself as a complainant remember the the state has entered the chat they are the ones who are prosecuting the case on my behalf but i'm going to help the i'm going to be uh, the prosecution can the witness right i'm the one who's going to be saying yes i went to dr kigondo's clinic on this mm -hmm. day on say date i'll write some statements whatnot and then the doctor may get representation and therefore it's going to be a case of beyond reasonable doubt because that's the standard we use for criminal cases right so remember uh evidence 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 once on this podcast i've mentioned that the fact it's a fact finding mission the exercise of justice it's not who's telling the truth who's telling a lie so maybe sometimes it boils down to how good your lawyer is or what kind of evidence you can gather or how weak the other person's case is or how well you can poke holes to adduce or, or rather you can poke holes into their case so that you can introduce some doubt right so the thing with um medical negligence when it comes to criminal cases it's so difficult for you usually to get a special or a mm. expert witness doctors don't like to give witness testimony against each other i don't know whether it's a bro code i don't <laughs> understand but that's usually our biggest bottleneck mm. as lawyers getting a doctor to come and say that this fell below the standard of reasonable no not reasonable doubt but this fell below the standard of care that is required of a doctor right mm -hmm. but some things speak for themselves some cases are usually strict liability cases for instance now when we are going into um same example actually because now what dr kigondo will be required to do is to produce the written consent, consent form because if it's there then my case doesn't mm. stand a day right so that's it for um criminal cases most of them also take a similar sh uh, uh similar course so now at the end there's probably going to be the fine or there's going to be the sentence most of these cases is usually the fine and <coughs> we usually have fines which are set or sometimes it's at a discretion depending on the uh, uniqueness of every case in some instances in some instances it's also because of how, the kind of evidence you had used to try and water down or to try and spruce up your case to show whether he took any reasonable steps or whether it was because there was a referral in between and there was a break in the you know chain of responsibility and therefore he thought that there was a, a consent form that was given earlier this would go a long way in reducing the liability and then now at this point whether he pays the fine or he serves the uh, the sentence now that's going to also depend on case to case right so now can we look at civil wrongs yes, please. civil wrongs now here we are on medical negligence they're called torts first of all um i don't know what the origin is but it's a common law we had, we um got our legal system from our colonizers the british and they're called torts t-o-r-t tort torts are civil wrongs so now one of the thoughts we refer to uh, in this instance is called negligence mm. so there are usually four elements for negligence the existence of a duty of care the breach of that duty of care um damages that i can show that this is the harm that i faced and that um there was a causation between the duty of care the breach and the causation of the damage so for instance um we have got very mm -hmm. popular cases we can refer to 
there was the patient at Kenyatta Hospital who got the brain surgery and mm-hmm. they were the wrong patient. Mm-hmm. There was a duty of care because from the point at which the patient gets into hospital, there's tri- there's uh, I think there's first of all the admin place, then there's triage. So by the time somebody's making their way into theater, some questions have got to be answered surely. How is it that you're supposed to operate on Dana Wangari and then you end up operating on Margaret Nyambura, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys usually do histo- hist- 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 it's called histology. And history. Other, history, mm. yes, you take mm. history, right? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> histology. Mm. Usually take history of your patients, right? Mm. Mm. And if Margaret does not disclose that she probably is hypertensive mm. and she should have responded. You see it also what has down her case in case she comes back to say that Dr. Kigondo operated on me and one, two, three happened and it led to my death or mm. something of the sort. Mm. So there is a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you have seen uh, you die <laughs> in your career. Right? Uh-huh. So there is a responsibility that also the patients have. Now, um, you want to sue the doctor because could you please give me an instance so that we can run with it, like the way we, we ran with the one for... So I want to sue my doctor. Um, why? Because either <coughs> I feel he did not give me the right um, management or treatment plan, which then led to certain complications. I either wasn't aware of those complications. I, yeah, that would be one that I'd think of. But Kigundu, maybe the, there'll be another that you frequently mm. hear about before mm. we talk about issues around cost and yeah mm. yeah so i think um and, and maybe she needed to complete her she thing because here we are we, we we normally the lawyers jump on to things they do not know mm. um as you can see their approach is to poke holes mm. you get what i mean mm. and maybe just to throw a spanner into the works into the a uh, whole scenario of uh, medical legal law. That's the reason we have um, a medical council. So uh, because medicine is um, almost a self-regulatory um, kind of issue and a lot of things contribute to the patient's care or poor care, whatever. And therefore, it is um, um, medical legal cases would normally go to a um, what they call it quasi judicial Kenya Medical Practitioner Dentist Council where even as you're saying doctors don't come to court to speak against other doctors but in the medical council um, various doctors are given uh, cases which are anonymized and you're told to analyze and it is from that expert opinion of three for instance that you can say okay we think this case was below standard was above standard yeah so a lot of the issues we have in terms of medical legal they can actually uh, be sorted out because uh, again there are various levels the patients think that the doctor was wrong the, the or not doctor per se the whole health system mm. the health system uh, says the standard of care was followed it just happened and um, it actually becomes and and, and 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 that's why initially there are these what we call um audits mm. they are called audits and we have um, um medical reviews and all so there are various stages at the kenya medical practitioner dentist council the issue is when now even after you've gone to the council then someone thinks no uh, the these doctors are i, I could hear it even from her comments huh? they are protecting each other then does it uh, go to court and um in my long life in medicine what i think is that some of the issues now um when you are addressing a court a judge is different from when you are addressing a a tribunal i sort of think that uh, the court system would be moved more by emotions which which is um which is uh, if 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 you say that uh, this doctor treated my patient and um, his arm got amputated. You get what I mean? Mm. So um, a judge who is not medical 
is more likely to avoid you. And it's right. It's not that um, it's wrong, but that does not make your treatment wrong, the so wrong to speak. You, you get what I mean? Mm. So this is actually, in terms of medical legal, our biggest uh, sort of conundrum. And um, it is an issue... I have particular interest in and um, the, the the way we look at it and um, and that's why there's indemnity you see you can do all you can but uh, you cause damage and uh, that damage has cost the, the the patients you get as in if for instance your uh, uh, damage you have to live with the damage mm -hmm. but the, the the medical system did their best so to speak but the damage occur and and hence maybe the concept of indemnity where okay um you do not kill the doctor because this other person got damaged but you must also um sort of pay for damage cost on this side and and hence the important topic mm. of indemnity. Mm. Yeah. That might even be a whole topic on its own. Mm. But then you can react because then essentially I think a lot of people, um, and I hear you, Kigondo, a lot of people would say, yes, we've gone to the medical board council, mm. but we're not satisfied. And mostly it's because then there's a sense of there's an element of we protect our own type of right so p most people would say they would rather just go directly to a legal system that will be they feel more objective actually mm -hmm. thanks for that dr kigondo so i was going to go to now just a special uh where we usually have tribunals because mm -hmm. even even tribunal. with having the criminal offense under the hiv is prevention and control act we mm -hmm. have a tribunal for that mm -hmm. so i was gonna finish with tribunals last mm -hmm. yes but what he said that kmpdc has got a kmpdb mm -hmm. the board right mm -hmm. yes who you appear before so first of all um anybody who would like to sue their doctor the the forms are online for you to place mm -hmm. the claim mm -hmm. and um at the, I've had a look at the forms. I think somebody can just make reference to them on the website. Mm. Mm. They're pretty detailed. There's so much space for you to fill in as much mm. uh, information as possible. And I agree with you, Dr. Kigondo. Maybe our approach is different, <coughs> doctors and lawyers, but generally we are looking, uh, we, we, are, we, we have got the same end in mm. mind. I say that for this reason. After the loss of a life, there's probably nothing we can do to bring back this person. Mm -hmm. But you realize it's probably poor emotional intelligence for me to say there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. Right? So that a doctor may say there is nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. But that's probably not what the family members mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. deceased mm -hmm. person would like to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, those are the words I'm likely to capitalize on if you're on the witness, if you're on the stand mm -hmm. and I am doing cross-examination for you. Mm -hmm. Because I am also allowed to use the tools of our craft which are words mm -hmm. anyway that aside um kmpd kmpdb right so you uh you file the the complaint is it usually what's the number of days within which they're supposed to have finished um determination do you guys have a number of days like For other filing? do mm. Yes, because I know cases there take a very long time. That's another complaint with the KMPDB. Mm. That's historical. I think when they got a new team, they really cleared case. They actually previously went for a retreat mm. in uh, Naivasha to mm. clear the cases because, yes, previously cases would take a long time. But um, I, I'm thinking with the reforms the board did and we had a strategic plan launch the other day, cases are much faster. And okay. that was a a, re a big problem. So it's okay, called yes. backlog. Mm -hmm. So yes. a lot of the achievements of KMPDC mm -hmm. would be that we have now our turnaround mm -hmm. time. A yeah. shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing also is that because of the self-regulation thing, and I think this is unique for professions because lawyers of also have got their own setup for uh, ethical considerations and whatnot and disciplinary committee. There is a lot of secrecy around what those processes are like because after you file your complaint, I think the point at which you engage with the with the board is the point where you're bringing witnesses. Now, if the person does not have witnesses and the doctor, the, the counsel is probably able to seek 
what you've said um an anonymized and an anonymity mm. you get your other doctors to find whether there was mm. reasonable care that was applied mm. despite the loss of life or despite the injury injury harm. yes mm. whether fatality or whether it was little whatever mm. it is that the case that uh, may have been i uh, don't think patients who have not been represented by an advocate who has got experience appearing before the board would have the same benefit as the doctor do so having already mentioned the hurdle of getting um a doctor now to come from the patient side to come and now counter the testimony of the three uh expert reports from the anonymous point of view the length of time the turnaround time for the cases has been another issue the anonymity mm. and then the decision is made i have seen however instances where there is a relationship between a civil action in court and somebody still being before the board mm. Mm. but because judicial time is usually said to be a precious resource one process has got to wait for the other mm. and because this one is more localized and specialized the court process usually waits for the board and mm. in some instances i've also seen uh courts giving orders that the 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 board does not sit to like halting mm. halting the sitting of the board to admit to um adjudicate over a certain matter mm. now if only there can be some sensitization mm. by the board on what usually happens during the the length of the um determination of the case mm. and then remember mm. even having lost life <coughs> indemnity kicks in to have the payment of damages this is not just unique to the board even when you have got now the negligence suits and they're before court remember i said the four elements of the tort mm. that there is a duty of care then there is a breach of that duty then there are damages and then there is now the um, causation direct linkage you show linkage between the duty of care breach thereof and the resulting damage mm you have to ask for the compensation bit mm. so there was a kid some some time back in uh, zikilifi mm. yeah malind is in kilifi county mm. so that's fine mm. so this kid had a procedure done on their head mm. and there was an iv that was put into their head and i think it was wrongly done mm. and correct me if i'm using the wrong terms mm. it was wrongly done so the kid temporarily lost vision for uh, a couple of days and then after that there were some complications and therefore the mother sued on behalf of the kid so mm. that's something i should have mentioned by the way mm. for people who are under age or of compromised capacity for instance people who have got um diminished mental capacity mm. or people who okay yes actually that's just just that mm. um or deceased persons but administrators of their estates may sue for them and also now for children their guardians their parents may sue for mm. them so the parents sued the the doctor and the hospital i'll put a note on that i'm going to mention why we are suing both the doctor and the hospital mm. but there was no requirement in the documents the pleadings what we call pleadings the ones that were presented before court for what damages the kid is going to be seeking now remember again you've mentioned on this podcast that you usually get what you ask for in if you demonstrate that you deserve it if you don't ask for it then you don't get it the issue of damages goes a long way because remember if somebody has got a percentage of disability mm. resulting from an a, a, a procedure gone wrong mm. the damage may not set them up for life but may ease the trouble that has come with or the, the incapacity that has come with uh, the occasion of the um injury that has been occasioned to them why are we saying we are suing the hospital alongside the doctor mm. now there is a contractual responsibility a uh, contractual relationship between the doctor and the hospital there is something we usually call vicarious liability vicarious liability is now between the employer and employee doctor and hospital mm. now we've also had cases where we've seen hospitals asking to be struck off the pleadings because of the kind of relationships they have got with the the contractual relationships they have mm. got with the doctors mm. Dr. Kigondo, maybe you may uh, take a mental note to make a comment mm. on that because I think some, some are independent consultants, some are employees of the, mm. cons of the institution mm. and therefore mm. they ask to be struck off. But what does that mean for the purpose of um, mm. uh, a, a legal claim mm. in, in court, right? Mm. Because if the hospital played a role in the breach of care, mm. it doesn't matter mm. what the contract said. Mm. Mm. If I'm to prove the four elements and I'm showing that there's a duty which existed. Mm. If for instance, mm. 
Mm. What went wrong? What went tr- what went wrong? Uh, was on the operating uh, mm-hmm. table, mm-hmm. and what should have been done was by the triage nurse. Mm. Do you see why we cannot ex- exclude mm. the hospital mm. from the pleadings, right? Mm-hmm. So vicarious liability therefore requires that hospital will also be one of the um, mm. defendants that are mentioned. Mm. Now there's also going to be the requirement for the person who is suing the doctor in the hospital to have a, a specific prayer before court mm. what why are you suing the hospital what would you like the hospital to do mm. are you asking for an apology in addition to some damages and also the mm. quantum quantum mm. of damages is usually also a really huge deal mm. now um in a country where legal services are not very affordable mm. they are not cheap mm-hmm. um <coughs> It's probably difficult for somebody to self-represent in mm. such a case, and therefore they may not understand the quantum mm. of damages that they can be afforded for a certain uh, degree of disability. Mm. Degree of disability, because that, what do I mean by that? For instance, there is a. L- I don't know whether you guys know this that mm. when you hit a motorcyclist mm. and they were not wearing a helmet, mm. you are automatically usually allowed thirty mm. uh, percent of whatever damages you may be paying them mm. because they contributed to the the injuries the well. injuries mm. because they did not adhere to their own regulatory mm. uh, requirements yes by wearing the mm. motorcycle mm. right mm. now there's also usually some small some smaller issues like what we call the thin skull rule mm. thin thin skull rule eggshell eggshell mm. rule mm. or thin skull rule mm. it's I sound so academic right it, now. I'm it it sounds like something we might need to discuss on the next show. Yeah. <laughs> so right. what I mean, actually, yeah. that's simply uh, yeah. the in, the British or rather mm. wazungu term for um, mm. you have to t- handle your patient the way you find them. Mm. Mm. Now maybe this should have been shared during history taking, but mm. it wasn't. Mm. Mm. But now that is who that is um, that is how they've presented and that is who they are and mm. maybe you sh- didn't ask for the history or you ought to have known mm. now you see sometimes those are some of the intricacies where you're calling mm. in someone else yet they didn't mm. know that and you require them to give expert okay. witness final question because yeah. there's there's a lot to unpack there it sounds like a final question what's what would you say is i want to say precedence but precedence will mean you might go into the details of uh cases that have Mm -hmm. gotten you know um is there a way for you to give us like a success rate because it sounds it almost comes off as if even just listening to you it's such an uphill task that people just don't win who, who is people? What people mean meaning people? Uh, someone who's taken a hospital, a doctor, a healthcare professional to court. It sounds like. Okay. Mm. So unlike criminal cases where the standard of proof is beyond reasonable doubt and my job mm. is only to poke holes. Mm. Mm. You see, Dr. Mm. Gigando poke holes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> my job is only to poke holes so that I can introduce some doubt in mm. your case. Mm. The standard for civil wrongs is uh, on a balance of probabilities. Mm. Now, that's the reason where mm. maintaining the balance so that it is on a balance of probabilities, it's a little bit of an uphill task mm. because of how technical it is. Mm. One, remember we spoke about the hurdle that is getting a doctor or rather a specialist to come and adduce evidence to mm. support your case. Mm. Say you get one. Then you also... Um, prove causation because sometimes proving causation can be really difficult Mm. for you to have that golden thread that is running from the point Mm. where somebody is hit Mm. yeah Yeah. and then they are taken to hospital Mm. now that thread has got to keep running so that you can have causation and Mm -hmm. to maintain causation is also important and that's why it's an uphill task if you break the chain of causation mm. where you introduce remember me mentioning the triage nurse and the mm. the specialist the consultant who was um operating on the patient mm. if you break that chain it means you also have to introduce a different person as a defendant mm. this is different from <coughs> the instance where you, you know the case of alex madaga mm. Mm. 18 hours mm. Mm. the guy who was in an ambulance yep. for 18 mm. hours yes, and they lost yes, their yes, lives yes. Mm. There, mm. we are not suing a doctor, we are not suing a hospital. Maybe we are suing NH, mm. but we were also, it's on, it was an issue of emergency mm. health care, and it was also taken up as a public interest case. Public mm. interest because this this man probably died, and it would have been any other Kenyan in his mm. position. Mm. So for him to have been 18, uh, 18 hours on the road, or yeah. in different institutions, mm. not having received care, so you are hit somewhere in Kikuyu, 
you go to you picked up by an ambulance yeah, it you took some time yeah yes mm. around so many institutions mm. there were two institutions including can i mention them on there? No. there were two institutions mm. who did not um who turned him away because mm. he didn't meet the 200k deposit mm. requirement mm. yet there is an existing constitutional requirement that every person no person shall be denied emergency mm. health care mm. now this goes beyond civil or criminal mm. it becomes a whole constitutional thing mm. right mm. so now also every case has got to be taken with its mm. circumstances that's mm. why we are talking about the appeal task mm. but the reason why it's an appeal task is because of the four elements have mm. got to be present mm. and it's like um the higher you go the cooler it becomes and the steeper and the air keeps mm. becoming thin mm. so the duty of care is it to establish that it existed because i've come mm. to you mm. immediately a contractual obligation yeah. exists mm. that you are there was a breach the breach mm. the hurdle there is having another doctor come to testify and to talk about how you fell bef- below the res- the standard of care that is supposed to be given to the, the patient or the other the client mm. and then there was the damage the damage may speak for itself because mm. then I'll take photos, I'll show there's a diminished capacity in one, two, three ways. Mm. And then to have the, to prove causation mm. and to maintain the mm. chain of causation and it to is. adduce it to a specific point in the chain of care. Mm. That's the reason why it's an <coughs> appeal task. task. And the higher you go, mm. and don't break the chain of causation. That's the reason why it's mm. difficult. And also her technical. I know what's Kikundu. Yeah, I think Kwangari, medicine, uh, like us, as uh, long as you're a pl- practicing clinician, you'll always get into some form of legal, or not necessarily legal, <coughs> something <coughs> may go wrong because this is medicine eh? and uh, because health has a lot of inputs mm. it's not necessarily your fault mm. but the system sort of wants to blame that particular person so to speak and that's why as you've had they sue the doctor and sue the hospital so um, so in terms of um, how we look for it, uh, and I uh, would use Kenya Medical Association as uh, an example, we have looked at this and we want to look at a way of instituting some form of indemnity, which protects not only the doctor, but also the client. And we've realized, so you want an affordable indemnity, four in one sort of affordable, and it is um, able to accord you legal uh, legal representation mm. it's able to prevent your your name from being spoiled because you see already when someone said that one died and the doctor was mm. this one mm. you see it the blame becomes is already automatic. becomes and mm. then finally some form of compensation you mm. see you want some almost an adr kind of mechanism mm. that for me in the long run is the greater picture because no one wakes up to mm. actually do harm Mm. You get, but it happens mm. by the nature of it uh, being medical. So, um, as they want uh, to sue doctors, doctors also have the obligation of documentation. Mm. You see, a lot of things, uh, documentation, documentation, mm. program, a lot of things fall by those holes being poked mm. are because it was not written so <laughs> i think um, this is a big uh, conversation it's a very big we conversation we haven't even scratched the surface we haven't we really have a number it's always great to have you and we'll have you next time <laughs> with the medical council <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for joining the One Health Lens podcast. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.